Eine junge Dame ist gerettet und die Kanalisation, ich tippe mal, fast geschafft. Ja, sieht gut aus. Und damit willkommen zurück. Ich hatte einem Kommentar geantwortet, was jemand unter eine Dark Souls Folge schrieb, von, wo er dann meinte von wegen, ja, er hatte so ein intensives und spannendes Spielerlebnis mit dem Spiel und ich würde mir das durch, dadurch, dass ich äh, farme, glitsche und Spoiler, hm, aber Spoiler habe ich doch eigentlich gar nicht bekommen, dass ich das niemals erleben würde und dann so ein Tja und ein, 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 ein äh, Smiley dahinter, so also ganz stehe, was mir das jetzt am Ende sagen soll, weil, also ich habe einen Wahnsinn Spaß damit. Also ich habe einen Riesenspaß mit dem, mit dem Dark Souls. Ich habe auch irgendwie nicht das Gefühl, dass mir da irgendwie was entgeht, wenn ich jetzt irgendwie meine, meine Punkterunde drehen, drehe. Da echt Spaß mit der Art und Weise, wie ich es spiele. Kann mich da nicht so wirklich beschweren drüber. Es ist ein bisschen schade, dass das so ja, ich weiß nicht, so dieses als gäbe es jetzt nur eine Art und Weise, ein Spiel zu spielen. Oder als dürfte jetzt, als würde jetzt einer entscheiden, ob, ob ich daran Spaß habe oder nicht. Also, was soll das? Verstehe ich nicht so ganz. Good evening, Miss Price. How are you tonight? Dr. Reed, I didn't know you had returned from the war. I had a new doctor when you left, but he's not as kind as you. Always glad to see a former patient in good condition. It's been a long time. Too long indeed. And as a token of my appreciation, I'll grant you the best price if you fancy buying anything from my humble shop. May I look at your goods? It's always a pleasure. So viel zu den Nieten. Ach so. <lacht> ich kann ja erst ja gar nicht ähm, on the fly ändern. What can you tell me about yourself, Miss Price? I'm still managing my shop. The only difference is since the quarantine we're open at night. You on the contrary seem to have changed a lot. Really? Have I changed that much? It must have been the war. And the night shifts since my return. Don't get me wrong, Dr. Reed, you're still handsome. Just maybe a little bit wiser, more serious. It suits you well. Tell me more about yourself. No new fiancé? I remember you were hoping to get remarried. I'm sure you must have a few suitors. Who would marry an old bat like myself with a grown daughter and a little business? As you know, I only fancy handsome men like yourself. Have you noticed anything in particular in this part of town recently? Other than you coming back to cheer me up? Nothing at all, Dr. Reed. Does your daughter still worry you, Miss Price? I remember you were often concerned about her health when she was younger. Have you not seen Carol since you returned? She's almost a young woman now. But she'll always remain my sweet little baby. So you're less afraid? Some things never change. Carol is still too clumsy for her own good. Sometimes her innocence puts her in real danger. Why would her innocence put her in danger? She does not realize how cruel life can be. Maybe I was a bad mother to protect her too much. My poor dear Carol. You have every reason to be cautious, Miss Price. Especially in these difficult times. Maybe you could talk with her, Dr. Reed. It would be nice to have a man here more often. We would both feel safer. Ja, besonders bei dem Mann. Do you know Aloysius Dawson? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. 
Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. May I look at your goods, Miss Price? It's always a pleasure to have you here, Dom. Ach so, das hat er ja schon gemacht. Dr. Reed, I am glad to see you again. Erstmal umschauen. Wie ist denn hier eigentlich noch? Ach guck mal, hier ist noch eine ganze Ecke. Dann geht's da hinten durch... Ah, klar, man muss natürlich den Weg nach Whitechapel wieder öffnen. Das ist ja klar. Ja, wie Klosbrühe. Gang ging noch unter der Kirche durch. Ach, guck mal, da kommt man schon mal nur raus. Und wahrscheinlich der letzte Unterschlupf, oder? So viel mehr tatsächlich Gebiet gibt es ja hier bald nicht mehr. Füllt ja immer nur nach, was ich, äh, was ich geladen habe, oder wie? Warte mal, dann machen wir das mal anders. Jetzt hier die hinpacke. Füllt der mir die nach? Nee. Nee. Schade. Schade. Zeig doch mal, was ich hier mit der neuen Waffe machen kann. Ich bekommen habe... Der hervorragende Säbel. So hoch kann man den beim Pushen auf 210. Ist aber von der Geschwindigkeit auch wieder langsamer. Das ist also nicht so geil. Wollen wir also lieber gucken. Hier mehr Blutpunkte aufnehmen. Das geht nicht. Das könnte der machen. Das geht auch nicht. Aber bei der Waffe war doch irgendwas, was ging, oder? Genau. Nieten haben wir genug. Ach nee, das habe ich schon benutzt. Dann machen wir noch Feuerrad erhöhen. Zusätzliche Schockpunkte. Zack. Machen wir das noch rein. Und dann ist auch jeder glücklich hier. Bin ich da rausgekommen? Ach, guck mal, das ist nochmal eine andere Ecke. Shadows! Uh, 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 
wahnsinnig viele Leute können die doch bald nicht mehr haben in ihrer geheimen Gesellschaft. So was hält man doch nicht geheim, wenn man da hunderte Leute hier unterwegs verliert. Funktioniert das? Das geht hier unten durch. Wo war ich vorhin eigentlich stehen geblieben? Ähm, ach, wegen den Kommentaren oder dem Kommentar. Ich weiß auch nicht so richtig, was ich davon halten soll. Ich bin ja. Hat er den Grummelfritz-Kanal eigentlich auch wieder ein bisschen belebt, weil ähm, ich das nicht mehr ausgehalten habe, wie viel auch auf dem Gamecube-Kanal mal rumgemeckert wurde. Weil eigentlich ist jetzt nicht so, als würde ich gar keine Kommentare mehr lesen wollen im Leben, aber es ist halt manchmal, wenn du so denkst, was, was soll ich denn jetzt mit der Aussage, dass mir jetzt jemand sagt, ich würde keinen Spaß mit dem Spiel haben können. Also, hä, das... Ich habe doch Spaß damit. Aber wahrscheinlich nimmt man sich das auch eh immer alles viel zu sehr zu Herzen. Einfach drüber hinwegsehen ist wahrscheinlich eine deutlich bessere Lösung. Aber das ist ja auch das, was... Also das... Ich mag ja meinen Job, meine normale Arbeit... Auch echt gerne, aber eine Sache, die da wirklich anstrengend ist, ist dieses, diese unfassbar aggressive und schlimme ähm, Kommentarkultur im Internet. Das ist so, so belastend, weil man echt ständig unter so Deu Dauerfeuer steht. Und dadurch, dass wir halt jetzt bei so einem großen Magazin arbeiten, hast du dieses Dauerfeuer immer. Also da gibt es... Das gehört einfach dazu. Muss man halt auch ganz klar sagen. Ist halt einfach so, kann man nicht ändern. Ähm, so eine populäre große Webseite zieht halt immer auch sehr aggressive Leute an. Oder sagen wir mal Leute, die scheinbar nicht wissen, wo, wo Schluss ist und da keinerlei Grenzen kennen. Aber es ist halt trotzdem anstrengend, auch psychisch anstrengend. Weil man nimmt das halt immer, ich weiß nicht, ob es jeder mit nach Hause nimmt. Ich glaube, manche, manche so gar nicht, aber ich nehme das immer alles mit nach Hause. Good evening, sir. May I ask you what you're doing here at this late hour? I'm conducting an investigation about the epidemic in this part of town. And who are you, sir? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. May I ask who you are and why all the questions? I'm Detective Inspector Charles Albright from Scotland Yard. And I don't find your answers convincing. What is a Pembroke doctor doing in the West End at this time of night? I work for the Ascalon Club. Here is my permit to go freely about the city. The Ascalon Club? You should have said so, sir. I must warn you, these streets are dangerous, and you'd better be careful. What can you tell me about this district? I'm the one asking questions, especially when there's a killer on the loose. What killer? I'm not going to discuss that with a civilian, sir. Haven't I told you about the investigation I'm conducting? Perhaps I could help you. All right. Without giving you too much information, I'll tell you this. I'm convinced there is a homicidal maniac on the loose, using the epidemic to disguise his kills. And what about the epidemic? We both know the situation is critical, don't we, Doctor? Colleagues of mine die almost every day. Why are you investigating at night? Criminals rarely act in daylight, you know. But since you are also a night worker, have you noticed anything strange which requires police attention? Hmm. Does the name Fergal ring a bell? 
Fergal Bancher. Of course it does. Fergal Bancher, the butcher of Galway. Hung in Dublin in 1857 for murdering more than 20 men with his bare hands. Why are you so interested in dead criminals, sir? Hmm, <laughs> interesting. What are you really doing here? I told you. I'm a detective inspector from Scotland Yard, investigating suspicious cases in the area. Do you work alone? Yes. The situation is difficult for the police. Many of us are sick, and since the summer strike, most men apply a work to rule on their patrols. What about the situation in the East End? Why are there no police there to protect the civilians? I know, it's a shame, but we just don't have enough men to cover the entire city. Tell me all you know about that homicidal maniac you're looking for. I'm not even sure there is only one. The wounds are always the same, but the modus operandi varies. Sometimes violent and brutal, sometimes precise and swift. How could different killers inflict the same wounds? That's my main problem. If my theory is correct, maybe we're facing a group of individuals sharing the same violent tendencies. Perhaps a sadist cult. What are you investigating, exactly? I have a missing woman, possibly abducted a few nights ago. Louise Teasdale. It seems you already found my other missing person, Mr. Tadao Kimura. Tell me about Louise Teasdale. She's a waitress. Her father reported her missing. We don't have enough men to search for her, sadly. Do you have any idea where she could be? No. But I feel she's been abducted. She went to a pub a few nights ago and vanished. I thought about the sewers, but I'm not equipped for such an investigation. What are you investigating, exactly? I have a missing woman. Possibly. Tell me about. She's a waitress. Do you have it? No. Da kann ich jetzt nichts sagen, dass ich die gefunden habe. Do you know anything in particular about a man called Aloysius Dawson? Who doesn't know the man? I think he intervened personally to put an end to the police strike of last August. What else can you tell me about him? Aloysius Dawson is exactly the kind of powerful and influential man who could commit murder and get away with it. With just one phone call. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Hm. Soll ich rein oder soll ich eher nicht rein? Ach guck mal, jetzt ist hier aber noch eine andere. Good evening, Miss Price. Ach guck mal, das I'm ist jetzt Dr. die Tochter. Reed. Do you remember me? Dr. Reed? Yes, of course, you are the doctor who healed me and my mum. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good to see you too, Carol. Are you all right? Oh yes. I I did not hurt myself recently. I know how to take care of myself now. I'm almost a grown-up. Why are you awake at night, Carol? I am helping my mother in her shop. It's not easy, but I'm a grown-up now. I'm sure your mother is grateful for your help. I do the best I can. But I'm so clumsy sometimes. I, I, I drop things. I injure myself. It's a, it's a good thing my mother has the patience of an angel. Why is work not easy? Is something or someone bothering you? Oh no, most people are gentle with me. But, but I'm so nervous sometimes. I, I pay no attention and hurt myself. Good thing my mum learned first aid. What can you tell me of the people living nearby? I don't speak to many people. Except our customers. It's not easy to make friends. And with the epidemic, it's even more difficult. What can you tell me about the epidemic? Some of our regular customers have left London. Some others only send their housemaids now. 
everybody fears the contagion. I've even seen men with weapons. Have you no friends at all? No. Mr. Nithicut used to pass by and was always nice to me. Does he not come by anymore? No. Mum said he was weird. Always reciting poetry about a girl he'd met in Whitechapel. I wonder who this Camellia may be. Have you ever met the famous Aloysius Dawson? Yes. A very strange man. Not very nice. What do you mean? He said he was ready to pay good money for rare books. And then laughed at what we showed him. Goodbye, Carol. Oh, I am sorry. I, I, I can't help you, sir. Perhaps you should talk to Dr. Reed instead. Good evening. You know... Carol's gratitude is exemplary. She seems determined never to leave you. I'm taking care of my daughter as well as I can. It's not always easy, but she's the best gift life gave me. But she'll probably leave you someday to live her own life. Will that be difficult for you? Why would she leave? Children sometimes stay with their parents until the end, for they know no one else will love them as much. Goodbye for now. I hope you can stay a little Good longer morning. this time. Habe ich denn jetzt eigentlich in dem Bezirk alle Leute entdeckt? Nee, da fehlen immer noch ein paar. Ach, der ist auch noch der Chef in dem Bezirk? Ach du Scheiße. Will ich denn noch mit noch mehr Leuten sprechen? Nö, oder? Good evening, Sir. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need my help? Yes, please. Would you be kind enough to tell me what the time is? That's all you need to know. Well, is it not important to know? As important as where you are? Or who you are? I suppose you're right. And who are you then, sir? I am Agamemnon Baker. Like my brother, I think we need to leave this city immediately. And my brother and I rarely agree on anything. May I ask what you're doing outside at this hour of night? I don't know. You should ask my brother instead. It was his idea in the first place. You must have your own ideas. From what I have managed to understand, I guess we're supposed to wait here. Waiting for someone to come. May I ask why you've not gone already, if you're so exasperated by this long wait? I believe fear is holding us back. My brother would have said it's laziness, but it's just because he's prouder than I am. What can you tell me about this part of town? It's the only place I've considered myself happy. Or at least that's what I believe. Unfortunately, it's time to leave. Why is that? Because I'm not feeling happy here anymore. Are you? What kind of question is that? What am I supposed to answer, exactly? The truth. And I believe you just did it, actually. What can you tell me about your brother? He's older than me, I think. But the important thing is that I really hope I'll die before him. Grief would just kill me, you know? Is that all? Pericles is very attached to this city, and without my insistence, he would never leave this place. We don't often agree on anything, you see? Who are you waiting for, exactly? The more I think about it, the more I believe it's not exactly a person we are waiting for. But what else could it be, then? I don't know. A feeling? An event? An impulse? How can I tell? Something that would allow us to leave this trap. I'm afraid I'm not following you. What kind of trap are you talking about? Have you ever... I felt like life trapped you in a role that does not fit you. That you are not in your place. That sort of trap. Trap? 
And you think leaving London will free you? At least it will give us the chance to be free. That's more than our present situation. Hope, Doctor. Hope is what truly drives mankind. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? You should ask that question to my brother instead. Personally, I've not seen Aloysius for many years. Goodbye for now, Mr. Baker. Hello again. Dich wollte ich gar Goodbye nicht sprechen. Now, Mr. Baker. Ah. Hello. <lacht> Goodbye for now. Jetzt aber. Good evening, sir. Yeah. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I be of assistance? Dr. Reed? Dr. Reed? Is there anything wrong? No, it's just... Your name sounds familiar. And your face. Have we met before? I think I would remember. So I suppose the answer is no. That's odd. I'm certain I've already heard of you. My name is Pericles Baker. Does that mean anything to you? I'm afraid not, sir. But it's a pleasure to meet you anyway. Hmm. The pleasure is mine, I guess. I only wish I could remember when it was that we met. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Baker. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? We are waiting. Waiting for someone. And why are you waiting for this person? Because we need to leave this city. As soon as possible. Why do you want to leave the city? I'm not really sure. Can you tell me anything about this district? As you like asking questions so much, would you allow me to ask you one first? Please, be my guest. Do you like this city? I know we are not living in the most peaceful of times, but I have learned to appreciate London's complexity. Yes, me too. This city tests us. It invites us to find ourselves, to discover our true nature scattered throughout its dark streets. But what if we don't like what we find? Do we ever know who we are? I wonder sometimes. Or maybe it is the journey to find out who we are that changes us. And what do you do, sir? For a living, that is. I stopped working when I decided to leave. When I realized what I wanted. I wanted something this city can't provide. But what were you doing before you took this decision? Does it really matter anymore? Considering the past seems so pointless to me. I have lived in this city all my life. And now I think it's over. Tell me more about why you want to leave London then. I just don't belong here anymore. I had to convince my brother to leave London because I know we need to find another life out of the city. Pericles, tell me why your brother disagrees with your presence here. Agamemnon is naive sometimes. Although don't consider him a fool, sir. He is often more lucid than me. At least you both have the same difficulty explaining what you're doing, and for what reason. But is that not a common problem for all mortals? What can you tell me about your brother? If you are searching for a pleasant chat, you should speak with him instead of wasting your time with me. He's always been the more gentle of us. That's it? That's all you can tell me about him? For the time being, true kindness is the most valuable quality, my good sir. Who are you waiting for? I'm sure he has a name. I really can't answer that question, since I don't know that person. And why is that? This person is mostly my brother's acquaintance. I don't even know his real name. Only that this man could help us leave this city once and for all. But why would you need this person's help to leave London anyway? Well, I thought we should have left this cursed place already, but my brother convinced me to stay a while longer. And here we are. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I've heard this is a man who has searched for his place in the world for a long time. I hope he found it. 
Goodbye, Mr. Baker. Hello again. Goodbye for now. Also, ihr zwei, ihr seid mir ein bisschen ein Rätsel. So, und wo geht's jetzt hier nochmal rein? I think I've lost my way. Das Verbrechen des verlorenen Wissens. Vampire sind gefährlich, tödlich, manchmal bösartig. Das ist eine Tatsache und ich werde sie nicht abstreichen. abstreiten. Doch dies ist nicht der Grund, weshalb wir begreifen müssen, was sie sind und manchmal wer sie sind, um so ein besseres gegenseitiges Verständnis zu erlangen. Erinnern Sie sich an das Gespräch mit Titus Flavius Joseph, Josephus? das von einem der unsrigen 1548 geführt wurde, als er schlussendlich die Kreatur in Spanien traf. Erinnern Sie sich, wie die vorsichtig gewählten Worte dieses Vampirs unsere Herzen stets erwärmten, wenn wir sie lasen? Denn sie sind besondere Fenster zu einer Vergangenheit, von der wir sonst nur flüchtige Blicke erhaschen. Titus Flavius Josephus gibt es nicht mehr. Seit ihnen die Jäger des, äh, Weg, äh, des Vatikans vor wenigen Wochen vernichtet haben. Mit ihm verschwanden auch die freigelegten Schätze seines Wissens über die Säulen unserer Zivilisation. Dies ist ein Verbrechen, so herzzerreißend wie der Mord eines Unschuldigen durch einen Vampir. Darum ist der Weg, den die Wache von Preven eingeschlagen hat, so verwerflich, wie er wertlos ist. Wenn Sie eine Ihrer methodischen Jagden auf die alten Vampire Englands veranstalten, anstatt sich ihnen vorsichtig und respektvoll anzunähern, zerstören Sie einen Teil unserer gemeinsamen Wurzeln mit den Unsterblichen. Sie ersticken eine Gelegenheit im Keim. Die Idee einer großen Jagd ist ein Verbrechen, weil sie blindlings Worte und Gedanken tötet. Aus, aus dem Brunnen des Wissens trinken von Asher Tall Tree Primas von St. Paulus. But I see terrible trials awaiting you. It's in the locked. Future. Jonathan Reed, at last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. My name is Usher. Usher Tall Tree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, to be precise. I'm really glad we met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me a truth. The cards told you to expect me? Yes, they tell me everything. They told me that you struggle hard not to take too many lives. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? I really don't know. I don't often go outside. And when I do, it's usually to quite distant destinations. So you see nothing in the stars for me. You're a poor fortune teller then. Oh, I can tell you many things. But they will only concern you, not the city. For example, I know that you offered your sister the final rest she asked for. Do the cards speak of my Mary? No. It's the burning aura of guilt that precedes you everywhere you go. Read my fortune. You have been chosen, Jonathan. I see on you the mark of a strong being, so powerful it needn't even reveal its strength. Tell me about yourself. What do you do here? Besides turning cards in the middle of the night. I'm for most a charlatan. For a few, I'm a vampire. And 
For you, I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. Some believe you to be a vampire. Who? The guard of Prewen, who else? For a time, they sent spies to observe my activities, and they even broke into my home to gather proof. Did they steal anything from you? A personal notebook they quickly took to their headquarters. All they had to do is to look at me. I'm aging. What better and definite proof that I'm not an immortal? Do you want your notebook back? If you ever find it, I'd be glad to have it back, of course. I do ask one thing, though. Do not read it. Jonathan, some secrets are not meant to be revealed, even to immortals. For how long have you been a primate? It was 15 years last year. What do you make of Dr. Swansea? Edgar is a brilliant and dedicated man. A man of his time, sometimes a little muddled, but always looking for new paths and new concepts. Can you read the cards for me? Are you sure you want to know what they will reveal? Yes, I am. It will cost you 150 shillings. Here is the The Joker. A woman bent to obey and debase herself. A cruel gaze in the dark. A monster laughing at you. Can you read the card? Put the money on the table then. Perhaps later. How do you measure the amount of blood on my hands? I told you. The cards always tell the truth. Well, most of the time. Is it possible to tell me my future? A vampire's fate is much more delicate to read, Doctor. But I can try. I would rather not know. How do you measure the amount of blood on my hands? I told you. The cards always tell the truth. Well... Is it possible to tell me... A vampire's fate... All right. The walls of your prison have already been raised, Jonathan. But you will freely accept to be locked inside, full of hope for a better day. Mm -hmm. How did you learn about Mary? And spare me the hocus-pocus parlor tricks. The truth, now! Swansea told me. Don't look at me like that. His task is to observe and gather information about vampires. He had to tell me about Mary. Mary did not deserve her fate. She had already suffered enough during her life. And yet the pain and the suffering went on after her death. Suffering is part of the immortal condition. Some prefer to lose their minds rather than face the simple truth. Pain will never stop. May I ask you about the Brotherhood? Of course. But I must warn you that there are some subjects we consider taboo, in spite of our fondness and acceptance of your kind. I know there is no love lost between the Guard of Prewen and the Brotherhood. What caused this rift? It was 1801. The Brotherhood was stronger then, a strength that made them hungry for ever greater power. An argument divided them, and the wound never healed. What was the nature of the disagreement? The problem was that both sides considered themselves the legitimate heirs of the original Brotherhood. We divide up the books, the relics, not always fairly or with consideration. Who founded the Brotherhood? That's precisely the kind of question I cannot answer. It is delicate and may reveal some of our secret traditions. So you're not just a club of academics and scholars? Once upon a time, very long ago, the Brotherhood did more than simply study the vampires. They took actions to eliminate the more ferocious and corrupted Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. 
Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. Goodbye, sir. And I rarely wander. Perhaps London will survive the epidemic, but I see terrible trials awaiting in the future. Jetzt habe ich aber doch alle gefunden im Bezirk, oder? Ja, ah, okay. Ja, dann geht die Rechnung ja doch auf. Aha. Das ist nochmal in einem ganz anderen Bezirk. Scheint man auch irgendwelche Geheimgänge öffnen zu können. Aber scheinbar nicht ich. Ich frage ist, ob ich noch mit mehr Leuten sprechen sollte oder jetzt doch hier mal reingehe und die Sache starte. Obwohl, ich schau mal, ich kann das Anwesen sogar betreten. Das passt. Das passt sogar... Moment mal. Wo war denn das jetzt? Ach, da vorne. Sekunde. Ich glaube, da lang. Nee. Da. Hier, oder? Genau. Dawson's Mansion. Here I am at last. But the question remains, am I ready to make a dying man my progeny? Ich will das gar nicht. Also ich will ihn nicht zum Vampir machen, der hat einen echt unangenehmen Eindruck hinterlassen. Ich räume gerne sein Haus leer, so ist nicht. <lacht> Und ein hübsches Haus hat er. Aber ich will ihn nicht als meinen... als meinen Ziehvampir haben. Zeitungsartikel. Hinrichtung des John Francis Sparrow. John Francis Sparrow, 21, wurde heute Morgen in der Haftanstalt von Pantonville gehängt. Mr. Sparrow wurde zum Tode verurteilt, nachdem man ihn des Mordes an seiner Schwester Alexandra Sparrow für schuldig befunden hatte. Bis zum Schluss beharrte der Mann auf seiner Unschuld. Vor Gericht wurde nicht ein einziger formeller Beweis für seine Anwesenheit am Tatort vorgelegt, aber er wurde trotzdem zum Tode verurteilt und hingerichtet. Scotland Yard weigerte sich, den Fall neu aufzurollen, trotz vieler Lücken im Abschluss. Ablauf der Ereignisse, die letztendlich zu Miss Sparrows Tod führten. Charles Albright, der die Untersuchung für Scotland Yard durchführte, wollte keine unserer Fragen beantworten, aber vor drei Wochen wurde er ohne offizielle Begründung degradiert, welche seltsame Art, eine effiziente Untersuchung zu belohnen. Clayton Darby Reduced in rank for falsely accusing a man of murder. I wonder what Inspector Albright thinks about his punishment. Wir werden es herausfinden, aber erstmal führen wir die Hauptstory weiter. Also krass, wie man da jetzt 
so durchläuft, ne, durch solche Level, ja, hm, ist ja ganz schön gebaut und so, dass ich das so vor 10, 15 Jahren überlegt hätte, so ein Level in einem, in einem Spiel zu haben, in echten, echten 3D, mit dem Detailgrad. <lacht> Verrückt. Crazy. Finally you're here, Dr. Reed. What took you so long? I had to pass several of your barricades and outposts to access your mansion, sir. Death, pestilence surround us, and time is against me. I see you've gathered some of the most expensive, albeit experimental, blood transfusion equipment available. All this could be so useful in a hospital. Yes, yes. Since Lord Redgrave sent me a doctor to perform my conversion, I thought you might find some of these devices useful. Most thoughtful. But tonight I'm not here as a physician. But I feel reassured that a specialist such as yourself would help me to escape the Reaper. Very well. But before I proceed, I have a few questions for you. If you must, but be quick, for I don't have much time left in this life. First of all, I need to be sure that you know exactly what is going to happen to you, sir. I can assure you I'm as informed as any man can be. I have planned for this moment, Dr. Reed. Planned very carefully. Believe me, there is a huge difference between reading about vampires and waking up as one. I learned that myself, the hard way. Oh my god, man, stop your whining. I don't have time for your pointless jibber-jabber. I will become your maker. Do you understand what that means? Well, I certainly won't consider you my liege or some such drivel. You can be assured of that. You'll need to feed on warm blood. Blood from mortals. How do you feel about that? I'm rich, Dr. Reed. And powerful. I'm sure I'll be able to acquire all the blood I need without ever having to sully my own hands. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? What I do know is that I'll crush anyone or anything that would dare to oppose me. Let's move on then. Please, I'm cold and tired. I feel my life waning with every moment. But first, before you embrace immortality, what would you do with such a gift? That's a rather impertinent question, Dr. Reed. And I will do as I please. Answer me all the same. What will your first action be as an immortal? To save London. I will finance the most efficient quarantine ever seen. I will build a wall that will separate the sick boroughs from the healthy ones. Who gave you the right to decide the fate of thousands of people? My money. My money and my pending immortality gives me the needed authority, Doctor. I'm a businessman. I'm used to tough decisions. You really plan to build a quarantine wall across London? Yes. It will be tall and strong, separating the wheat from the chaff. By doing so, you will also create two separate prisons. Come, sir. An eminent doctor like yourself knows that such radical measures have proved efficient in the past. Let me guess. You mean to isolate the rich from the poor? This is a desperate measure for desperate times. England must prevail, Doctor, no matter the cost. Quarantine is not a bad idea, medically speaking. But I'm convinced this epidemic will not be contained by mere walls. As long as the right people are on the right side of the wall, that's all that matters. But you can't guarantee infection will not spread. Just one contagious carrier would be enough to create an apocalypse. The apocalypse is already knocking at the gate. We must be strong now. What if a new outbreak happens inside your walls? You'll have created a giant trap. That won't happen. As long as we dispose of anyone that is contaminated, as soon as they are spotted. 
I've heard enough. It's time to proceed. At last! All right, do what you have to do. If it hurts, so be it. I've been preparing such a long time for this. Hmm. Aber was wäre jetzt in den Band ziehen? Vergessen Sie Ihre Angst vor dem Tod. Ich glaube, ich nehme die Variante, oder? Also ich verwandle den auf jeden Fall nicht in einen Vampir. Listen to me, Aloysius Dawson. You will forget your fear of dying, for it has poisoned your mind and made you bitter and ruthless since the death of your twin brother. You don't understand. Death is oblivion, the eternal void. I know there's nothing there. I saw it in Robert's empty eyes. I saw myself in that coffin. Death is painful for those who remain, not for those who have passed. All that occult gibberish you filled your head with has made you forget this simple truth. No! Death will not claim me. I have the power and the money. I've acquired the arcane knowledge needed. I believe there is magic. There are dark forces. You will provide me my extension. Your ignorance makes you a fool. You have no idea. Look at me. Hunted like a beast. My family lost. Cursed. I have not escaped death. I have become it. No, there must be a way. I don't want to go like my brother did. I have money. Lots of money. Money won't ease your mind. I know you used to be a good and generous man. So I offer you the gift of peace, Aloysius. The tranquility of a true death. I accept your offer. And I understand. No more fear, I will die a man of dignity. And a man at peace. It's locked. Das wird dem Lord sicherlich nicht gefallen, was ich hier gemacht habe. Aber er wird damit leben müssen, denn er scheint ja nicht ansatzweise so mächtig zu sein wie ich. It's locked, all right. Warum kriege ich denn jetzt nicht den Schlüssel von dem... <lacht> von den doch Leerräumen? Erzählt mir doch nichts. Oh, wer bist du denn? Ach, das ist ja Redgrave, oder? Ja. Is it done, Dr. Reed? Is Aloysius Dawson reborn, as expected? I'm afraid Mr. Dawson finally chose to embrace life and death as a mortal. What do you mean? He has overcome his fear of dying. I let him rest and wait for death to come. What? This is unacceptable. Go back there and make him the powerful icon he's destined to be. No, Lord Redgrave. As a doctor and as an immortal, I can't. If you wish to make him your progeny, then proceed on your own. This is an outrage beyond words. This is betrayal, pure and simple. I should kill you on the spot. You swore on William Marshall's blood. Well, get rid of me then. From now on, you're an outcast. Banished. You are forbidden to ever appear in front of us again. Ascalon will smite you on sight, and your heart will be thrown to the rats. I'll leave you then. Have fun with your puppets and shadow plays, Lord Redgrave. Yes, go, traitor, and take that awful creature, that counterfeit of a woman I saw waiting for you, and be gone! Step away, traitor. Return to your dubious friends and your decrepit hospital. Do not dare show yourself again, you or that monstrosity you bring to my door. Da hätte ich jetzt fast Bock, mal nochmal zum Club zu gehen und Klopf, Klopf zu machen. Mal zu schauen, was sie machen. Ich glaube nur langsam, dass ich wahrscheinlich mächtiger bin als die da vor Ort.
We meet again at the strangest of times, young Ekon. So do you serve the Earl of Bristol now? Old Bridget? What are you doing here? Your friend, the wise Ekon. She sent me to warn you. Did anyone see you? It's a long way from the dock sewers, and hunters are patrolling the streets here. Who said I took the streets? How do you think I survived for centuries in this city without ever being seen? I know all her secrets. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? She came to us in the sewers in search of answers. Just as you did. What kind of answers did you give her? I knew nothing of your maker, but we talked. We talked a lot. Her words and ideas are captivating. It is no surprise that you like her. I like her too. Lady Ashbury in the sewers? Now that's a sight I wish I'd seen. She said she was your friend, and that she sought the identity of your maker. So I answered her questions. Lady Ashbury? You know her? Tell me what's going on. The lady approached me but a few nights ago, wanting to meet the sewer skulls. Once she questioned Harriet Jones, she agreed to help us. Harriet Jones is still with you then? How is she doing? Harriet remains angry, but is recovering slowly. Her mind is twisted, but at least her body is healing. Tell me what is going on. The lady asked us to keep an eye on your mortal doctor friend while you were away. We spotted the hunters. They were discussing plans to attack tonight. Wait, slow down. I need to ask you something. I'm listening, but I do not have time to waste, so be quick. Where is Lady Ashbury right now? She said she will go home. She needed to speak with some old friends first, though. Do not worry, young Ekon. She is no fool and just as strong as you. How did Elizabeth find you? She presented herself humbly at our gate and asked if we knew of any ancestral vampires hiding in London. She asked about Ascalon. She asked about many things. What do you think of her? Her soul is good, yet tainted with a deep sadness and the scars of ancient wounds. Time does that to us immortals, for we have so much to dwell upon. Why did she come to you? I am old Bridget, the buried memory of the city. She sought the silent truths, truths I have kept hidden for so long. Why do I feel like Lord Redgrave was particularly irritated to see you? Far more so than the average Skull, if I may say. Because I used to know him quite well. And he is afraid I may remember who he really is. You're Elizabeth's informant. You're the one who told her about Lord Redgrave's lies regarding his lineage. Yes, but my words were not meant to hurt or threaten. I simply told the story of the Sewer Skulls and of so many other forgotten children. No time to lose, then. I must go there right away. I shall return to my den. Have you a message for the lady? Should I see her before you? Ah, come. All in. Yes. Tell her I love her. Is this still unknown to her? Go now and take care, young Ekon. For the flames are rising. So, ein Angriff aufs Krankenhaus steht bevor. Den werde ich aber erst in der nächsten Folge abwehren. Also, bis denn. Tschüss.